There's always this pregnant pause before we go live. Do you want to say hello to the person sitting next to you or turn around and say hi? Go on, do that. <clears throat> now we've been caught out because we have gone live. <clears throat> So a warm welcome to Christ Church this morning. My name's Nigel Paul. I'm on the team here, and I'm leading the worship this morning. Rob's going to be preaching on uh, at the book of Ephesians. I'm going to come to that in a second. And welcome, where am I? So I must be on this camera up here. Welcome if you're joining us online from wherever you are, whether you're the other side of the car park or the other side of the world, you are most welcome to be joining us here live uh, at Christ Church Beckham. Now, occasionally I'm told that two guests who are here this morning watch us on our YouTube channel. Maybe sometimes I think even on Catch Up. But they were so determined to be here this morning, not watching it on Catch Up, not uh, watching it on this little screen, but coming here live this morning. So, Dick and Caroline, welcome to back to Christ Church, at Christ Church after so many years. Just stand up and say, Give them a bit of a round of applause and a wave. All the way from the other side of the world because they were just determined to be here this morning and not watch it on live stream or catch up. Sorry. So um, welcome if you are here for the, as, a, well, as a guest as well this morning or a visitor. You are most welcome to be here. You know, every book in the Bible has its own unique themes and message. Genesis is the book of beginnings, Matthew, the book of the kingdom, Galatians, the book of liberty, but Ephesians, well, Ephesians is the Christian's book about the riches, our riches in Christ, and Rob's launching our series on the book of Ephesians this morning. And one of the verses that we'll read a little bit later says this, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every kind of blessing in Christ. And the source of our blessings, well, that's God the Father who made us rich in Christ. And when we're born again into God's family, we're born rich because through Christ we all share in the riches of God's grace. God's glory, God's mercy. Another verse we're going to pick up on a little bit later, the unsearchable, un unsearchable riches of Christ. Our Heavenly Father, He isn't poor, He's rich. And He's made us rich in His Son, our Lord and Saviour Jesus. And the Holy Spirit channels those riches into us from the Father through the Son. And that's the wonder of our God, the God we've come to worship this morning. Would you stand with me if you're able, please? And we're just going to have a, a moment of praising our Lord and our God this morning. There's a response which will come up on the screen. Uh, would you respond with the words in bold, please? Great and wonderful God, we bring you our worship this morning. We join with the great company of your people on earth and in heaven to sing to your majesty, to marvel at your love, and to rejoice in your goodness. You are our God, and we praise you. We acknowledge you as the Lord of heaven and earth, ruler of space and time, creator of all, sovereign over life and death. You are our God, and we praise you. We salute you as the beginning and the end of all things, the one who is greater than we can ever begin to imagine higher than our highest thoughts and beyond human expression. You are our God, and we praise you. We affirm you as all good, all loving, all gracious, all forgiving. You are our God, and we praise you. And so we bring you our worship, our faith, our church, 
our lives, offering them to you in grateful adoration. You are our God, and we praise you. Father God, you are worthy of our complete attention and worship and utter adoration this morning. So we pause simply to be with you today as we become of your, aware of those kind of distractions in our minds, Lord. We just set them aside one by one so that we can focus on resting on you and worshipping you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, as we worship your holy name.
Please do take a seat. We've just sung these words, and you're slow to anger. Your name is great, and your heart is kind. Which is just as well, really, isn't it? Because we completely mess it up most of the time, and we need to come to the foot of the cross, to the amazing grace and love of the Lord Jesus to simply say sorry for the stuff and the baggage of our life. So a moment or two just to reflect on our own lives. Maybe this morning, maybe those things we've said, those things we've done, those things that we just simply regret. And then we're going to leave them at the foot of the cross, having prayed this confession which is going to come up on the screen together. God of grace, forgive our ingratitude for the blessings that we have received. Help us to live the lives we proclaim. God of peace, forgive our impatience with the actions of our neighbor. Help us live the lives we proclaim. God of love, forgive our intolerance towards those of other faiths and none. Help us to live the lives we proclaim. God of mercy, forgive our reluctance to offer a word of forgiveness. Help us to live the lives we proclaim. God of hope, accept our repentance as a sweet-smelling offering along with the service of our lives. Amen. We're going to sing again, but we're going to remain seated in an attitude of worship as we reflect on the Father's love for you and for me.
As we remain in an attitude of prayer, Madge is going to lead us in prayer. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and many, many Anglican churches throughout the world will be praying this prayer called the Collect for today. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Christ, as members of your body, you have made us also members one of another. Help us now by the aid of the Holy Spirit to forget ourselves and to feel the burden of others' needs. Then, O Lord, through our prayers, minister your grace and power to them as you see most for their good and in accordance with your will and for the glory of your name. Amen. As we pray for the life of Christchurch and all that goes on here, let us think about those who lead, preach, teach, remember our life groups, our children in the halls, Bible study, all sorts of things that help us to be closer to Jesus. Living Lord, we thank you for the honour and joy of being called to the service of your church. Help us never to grow weary in well-doing. Make us always ready to give a reason for the hope that is in us. And keep us faithful and vigilant as servants who wait for their Lord's coming. We ask it for your name's sake. Amen. Enable us, our Father, to respond to the grace of your word with humility of heart and in the spirit of loving obedience, that our wills may be brought into submission to your perfect will and our lives be more and more conformed to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we pray for the difficulties that there are in so many parts of the world, Ukraine, Yemen, Afghanistan, Iraq, lots of other places, let's remember that also today is the annual remembrance of the Red Cross and for what they do in places where there is conflict. Ruling and reconciling God, creator and sustainer of our world. We pray for those places where politics is wrought with pain and where communalism shouts more strongly than community. Protect the vulnerable and quieten the spirits of those who see violence as their solution. Give voice to your church to enable it to witness for justice and truth. Encourage the people of all lands to cherish the value of unity in diversity, to honour one another and all humankind as your creation. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who came to offer us your gift of abundant life. Amen. As many places in the United Kingdom went to the polls today, let us pray for those who are in government both local and national. 
the whole balance and sometimes messiness of political life often defeats us and defeats our, our, our best interests sometimes. But we can pray for those who rule over us. We pray today for statesmen, leaders and rulers, members of local government and members of parliament. May they be quiet in spirit, clear in judgment, able to understand the issues that face them. May they think often of the common people on whose behalf they must speak and act. May they remember that in keeping your laws is man's only good and happiness. Grant them patience, courage, foresight, and great faith. In their anxieties, you, Lord, be their security. In their opportunities, be their inspiration. By their plans and their actions, may your kingdom come and your will be done. Amen. As we pray for missionaries today, we are so glad that um, welcome of mission partners with us. We're also very glad that not only are Dick and Caroline here, but there are members of our community here in Kimalili in Western Kenya this Sunday. Father, we give you thanks for Christians who have given their lives in love and service of mankind. We remember today all who quietly live sacrificially so that others may enjoy the fullness of life that you give. We ask you to bless all those who risk their lives to bring the good news to others. In Jesus' name, amen. As we pray for our homes and our families today, in many parts of the world, it is Mothering Sunday. Australia, South Africa, and many other places. Lord Jesus Christ, who by your coming to us in great humility, sanctified the life of the home, we commend to you our homes and the members of our families, both near and far away. Unite us in your love and guard us by your power from all danger and evil. Make us thankful for all the blessings of family life and keep us mindful of those who are living alone as well as for whom the word home has no meaning. In Jesus' name, amen. And we pray today too, always, as a church family for those who are sick, those who are bereaved, those who are mourning, those who are carrying a burden that's too heavy for them. We know that some of them are mentioned in our bulletin, and I can tell you that Leslie Foster is home from hospital now, but we also know that there are people who carry burdens that are known only to you, Lord. Lord Christ, shine your light upon all who are in the darkness of suffering and grief that in this light they may receive hope and courage and in your presence they may find eternal rest and peace. For your love's sake, amen. Let us end as the church family here by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In a moment or two, Rob's going to bring us God's Word, but I'm going to read God's Word before Rob comes up. So it's the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, and I'm reading the first 14 verses, 
And if you want to grab a Bible from the chair in front of you, you should find it on page 1173. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to adoption to to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the, in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we are also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to, be put out, to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in, marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who was a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this book, this word. We thank you for all that's contained within it. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that we uh, might just respond to it by a change in lifestyle by a change in our church, and Lord, by a gratitude for you. Amen. Well, uh, can I add my welcome to you, uh, whether you're uh, here in the building or whether you're online uh, at home, it's great to have you with us as we start our new sermon series for uh, the spring term. And uh, if you haven't already had a look, there is a little booklet at the back for you to pick up. It's also available online, uh, which will give you an introduction to uh, what we're looking at. And we're looking at Ephesians in the morning, and we start that today. And we started last week in the evening with the evening series on 1 and 2 Timothy. Uh, Timothy is um, uh, the leader of the church in Ephesus, and Paul is writing to him. So there's a link between those two. The letter to uh, the Ephesians is um, somewhat unique uh, in, in some ways compared to all the other writings um, attributed to Paul uh, in that it has such a depth and breadth of uh, theology, such a scope of its theology, particularly in the first half of the book. Uh, And then it also has a language of worship and of poetic prayer that we don't find uh, in the same way in other Pauline uh, literature. It comes with instructions uh, to the church to live in direct influence uh, and reflection of its dynamic relationship uh, with Jesus. Uh, And uh, it's um, a favorite for many people, uh, not least Uh, people like John Calvin, even though it comes uh, with a strong set of corrections to the church as well. It's not an easy book, but it's uh, a full book. And uh, throughout this book, we'll look at uh, the way Paul calls the church to do things differently, 
to take some things off, to lose some things from the personality of the church and the individuals that make it up, and to put different things on. So he will say, uh, we will need to take off lies and put on truth. Take off anger and put on peace. Take off theft, replace it with generosity. Gossip and replace that with encouragement. Revenge, put on forgiveness. Promiscuity, put on self-control. And take off drunkenness and drink in the Spirit of God. It's a great letter, and uh, as we look uh, to continue looking at uh, being better at pastoral care, it teaches the church and calls the church to behave differently and to do things differently, as that list demonstrates just there. Paul goes to uh, Ephesus part of his, uh, as part of his third missionary journey. And he stays there for nearly three years. And you can read uh, the story of that from Acts 18 and following. Ephesus is the main city of Asia Minor. It's the seat of the Roman governor and the home to the really hugely influential temple of Artemis, the pagan temple, which draws people from all across a wide region. And it's there that Paul most likely wrote his two letters to Corinth. And it's there uh, that he sends Uh, Timothy to Corinth. While in Ephesus, Paul spends his time, as is typical, preaching in the local lecture hall, baptizing new believers, making new converts, attending synagogue, and building up the church across that whole region. And his ministry is tremendously successful. But it's so successful that he begins to gather opponents. One such man is a local silversmith whose job it is and livelihood it is to make um, uh, idols and memorabilia for the people attending the temple of Artemis. So successful is Paul that his business is floundering because not as many people want to buy uh, his wares. And so he stirs up the crowd and begins to incite a riot. And uh, it's um, at that point, that's just one of the little ones trying to get out of the crash. So good is my preaching. Yeah. Let me hear you say amen. No, don't, don't worry about it. Um, so, so Paul is so good uh, that uh, the riot, a riot is incited against him. And in the end, Paul decides uh, that it is time to move on to Macedonia. And so leaves Ephesus. And it's not until Paul uh, is first imprisoned around AD 60 in Rome that he writes this letter to uh, the churches in the region of Ephesus. Unlike 1 and 2 Timothy that are written to a specific uh, church, a specific congregation, a specific church leader, the Ephesians, the letter to the Ephesians is a wider brief than that. It's for all the churches in the area. And what a letter he writes. Surely you must have picked that up as Nigel read the passage. Surely you must have been moved by that opening. Richard Kirkin, the uh, local um, but uh, widely known uh, uh, evangelical uh, pastor and uh, author uh, here in South London, uh, recently published a work on Ephesus called Ephesians for You. He writes this of what we've just heard. The epic explosion of praise for our blessings in Christ in Ephesians 1, 1 to 14 deepens our appreciation of almighty God's rule. The epic explosion. Did you get that? Did you hear an epic explosion? Were you tuned in for that epic explosion? I guess that's a no. Yes, that's a no. Well, I'll confess that when I first read it in uh, preparing this series, um, I didn't catch it as an epic explosion either. So we're okay. But that's exactly what it is. It's an epic explosion of what God has done for you and for me. It's massive. Make no bones about it. It is massive. I I want to encourage you to go home, not now, to go home at the end 
and to pick through these 14 verses again. Read them over and over again. And uh, if you want to go onto the internet and look at them under a different version and see what other versions say and tune your mind and your heart in to the epic explosion of praise for our blessing in Christ. Paul is writing to a predominantly uh, converted Gentile church who are faithful in their life with Jesus. And throughout this letter, he will talk about worship and prayer and fellowship and generosity and doctrine. It is a full, full on explanation of what we are to be as Christians and more so what God has done for us as sinners. And almost as a prelude to the opening uh, boom of that epic explosion, Paul writes uh, in verse 2, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Almost a throwaway line. We hear it so often uh, as we read uh, these uh, letters in the New Testament. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul isn't saying to us, I hope you feel all right. I hope you feel okay. It's not just, uh, you know, a welcome. It's not just him saying, how are you? Best wishes. It's not that. Paul, in just that short line, is going to take another uh, 11 verses to explain as he goes on. Grace and peace to you from God. Grace. God's saving work. God's sacrificial offer of himself in Jesus Christ for you. Everything that you didn't deserve, Paul says, here it is for you from God. Peace. Not just that you feel at ease. Everything is calm. Hope you're having a good day. But peace as in no more conflict between you and God. No more division, no more separation, no more God saying, I can't look at you because of what you've done. Peace. Being close to God. In that throwaway line. But more than that, in that throwaway line, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, just in case there was anybody reading this letter who still wanted to say, well, you know, actually God is the most important thing and it's through God that I believe everything and Jesus, well, he was a bit this or he was a bit that and he was a good guy, but no, no, Paul says, you know, these things, your salvation and that lack of distance between you and the Almighty God come through God and Christ. Christ working through God. The saving act of God through his son, Jesus Christ, who is part of the Trinity. And that, friends, is just the blue touch paper. That's just the prelude. That's just the introduction. Because then, bang, comes the massive thing that uh, Paul wants to say. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Bless you, he says. He's blessed you with everything that there is in the heavenly realms. This is uh, the the Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. There's that song that we, that we often sing, bless the Lord, O my soul, bless the Lord, O my soul. Spurgeon says, God blesses us, therefore let us bless him. He says, I pray that every heart here may take its own part in this service of praise. Sit in your seats and keep on blessing God from the first word of the sermon to the last. Then go on blessing God till the last hour of your life. Enter into heaven, into the eternal glory, still blessing God. It should be our life to bless him who gave us life. It should be our delight to bless him who gave us all our delights. So says the text, and so let us do. Bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord for what he's done for us. 
Now, I, I, I'm not pretending that at first glance that's not a hard thing uh, for us to hear at times. Each of us at one time or another, and even now, is struggling with something that has made it difficult for us to say, oh, thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. Bless you for all that you've done for me. There are some very hard times happening for some very lovely people in our church and our families at the moment. And Paul is not being flippant or insensitive, and he's not even being unrealistic when he says, praise the Lord. Give God thanks. Say, wow, Lord, look at what you've done. Paul knows that life is hard. He lives a hard life himself. But he says, because we, through Christ, have been given every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, we can say thank you. Forgiveness is not possible without uh, the Lord's intervention. Forgiveness and sonship and adoption are not possible. Victory is not possible without the Lord's intervention. But with it, all those things that are about our eternal future and our heavenly life are all granted to us. Notice this is not an earthly blessing. Paul doesn't say that God has given us every blessing on earth. This is not a blessing of health, wealth, or happiness, but eternal, beyond the now. That's what Paul is talking about. He's saying we can thank God because there is so much that he has done to change our eternal future and our current relationship with him now. And, he says, it's always been his desire always for he chose us in, in he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight a year ago i bought um, a second hand car and uh, this week it was its first time into the dealership to be fixed and uh, i rang up to book it in and they said to me uh, Mr. Hinton, uh, your car has a service pack on it. So I said, right. And they said, that means that the person who bought it originally, four years ago, paid for all the services. So when you bring it in, you won't have to pay anything. Which was great, because it was a £450 bill. And I took it in, and uh, we uh, talked it all through, and at the end, when I picked it up, there on the invoice, it said to pay naught pounds and naught pence. I felt very good. <laughs> if I knew the man who'd first bought the car, who had prepaid for all the services, because it transfers with the car, not with him or her, um, I would have rung him up and said, thanks ever so much. That's what God has done, prepaid all the services predestined he said i chose him he said i chose you before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight in love he goes on he predestined us for adoption to sonship or daughtership through jesus christ in accordance with his pleasure and his will isn't it amazing isn't it amazing that before anything else was thought about, you were thought about, I was thought about. Before the world was made, God knew about you and about me, knowing everything there is to know about us, and said, I am going to prepay what it costs for you to be put right. I'm going to prepay for that. And he makes clear as he goes on that that's always been his plan. That we should have full fellowship. That we should be the ones who receive everything that God has done for us. And he uses, as he goes on, such a wonderful list of words to, dis to uh, describe his intention and his purpose for us. He chose us. 
in verse 4. He predestined us in verse 5. His good pleasure and will. He purposed for us. He appointed us. He had a plan for us. It goes on all the way through this passage. There is no doubt that that's what God wanted for you and for me. And in that is the security that we need to hear when life is hard, and I say this to myself as much as I say it to you, we hear Paul say, God always, always, always had the best in heart for you. Whatever you're going through, the future is ready and safe and waiting for you, for all of you. That's always been God's plan. This isn't about who gets in and who doesn't get in. This isn't about uh, those age-old uh, and ongoing arguments, uh, theological arguments about predestination and uh, can some people not get in and some people do get in and some people have been chosen and some people haven't been chosen. This is about God's intent. And he said, I looked at everybody beforehand and I wanted to make a way so that all could get in if that's what they chose. And I did it through Jesus Christ, my son, and his death and resurrection on the cross. And we read that in 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter 18 to, to 21. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. That's always been the Lord's intention. Now we might want to say, but Lord, I, I, I don't like myself. How is it that you can like me? I, I don't understand myself. How is it that you can understand me? I feel like I'm the butt of everybody joke, everybody's jokes. Why, why aren't you laughing? I feel excluded. Remember, God, it, Paul is talking to a Gentile congregation who have always been excluded from the Hebrew nation, from being the chosen race. Here, Paul says to them, you are included. You are included. It doesn't matter that you're a Gentile. You are included. It doesn't matter that you confuse everybody else. I understand you. It doesn't matter uh, that you feel isolated. I am with you. It doesn't matter that you don't like yourself. I like you. God says, it doesn't matter how excluded you've been before. I sent Jesus that you might be included. That you might be included. That's our assurance when life is hard. That's what Paul says, is how we can praise God when things are difficult. And that's what Paul says in verse 6. He goes on and he says that the reason uh, that you've done this uh, through Jesus Christ in, order, in, in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us uh, through the one he loves. Through what God has done for us, we praise him just by being saved, just by having received freely the abundance of God's love for us, Three, freely receiving that uh, uh, redemption from our sins. Something that God has lavished upon us. All those images of cups overflowing in the Bible, of tables prepared, Isaiah 25, 6, about that lavish feast that's set for those who are in trouble. God has given you and me a lavish gift, abundant gift, not mean-spirited, not half-hearted, not something uh, that we think, oh, is that it? Not something that loses its shine, not something uh, that uh, actually isn't dependable to turn to all the way through our lives and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. What can I say? Thank you for saving me. He made known to us in verse 9 the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ. It was his good will, his desire, what he was happiest doing to give you and me a way back into a relationship with God. How wonderful is that? How wonderful. 
that we might praise him because of what he has done for us. And, Paul finishes, he will also set upon us the seal of his Holy Spirit. Not only is the Holy Spirit that person uh, that enables us to live lives uh, in reflection of the saving grace that we have received, but also, Paul says, it is the guarantee of God. The Holy Spirit left with us, poured upon us, indwelling inside us, is that inbuilt guarantee that what God says is true. We can know the truth of God's saving work and his forgiveness and his love through the acceptance of the Holy Spirit within us. If you're feeling like you don't know the boom, the epic explosion of this, if you're still saying, I still don't get this, maybe the prayer that you need to pray is, Lord, put your Holy Spirit in me. I know you love me. I know you've saved me, but something's missing. I want to feel it. I want to live in the security of it and the reassurance of it. I want the guarantee of it, Lord. One of the versions uses the word deposit. As I picked up my car at the end of the day and uh, drove out of the very uh, fancy forecourt, leaving the leather sofas behind and the offers of water and tea and all kinds of things, I said to the car, tapped it on the, on the, uh, on the uh, steering wheel and said, well, car, just to let you know, the service pack runs out on the 22nd of May this year. We just got in in time. Just letting you know, you're never ever going inside a BMW garage again because <laughs> I can't afford it. The Holy Spirit is the never-ending service pack of the Lord. It never runs out. There is no sell-by date. We never get to the point where we have to say to God, and to, I have to say to ourselves, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, God, I can't talk to you anymore because it just ran out. Because God says, I give you my Holy Spirit, and it will never run out. Neither will the Lord's love, and neither will his saving grace. And on the back of that, we walk in to the rest of Ephesians knowing that the Lord is with us and whatever he asks us to do as individuals and as a church, we are able in his strength and his grace and his mercy and his peace to be able to do. Let's pray. Loving Lord Jesus, we thank you uh, that you never run out, you never run dry, your love is always present. We thank you that it is powerful and praiseworthy and that it is full of blessing. We thank you, Lord, that we can be different today to how we were yesterday. So, Lord, we pray as we go through this series that you will enable us in joy and wonder and thanksgiving and praise to be changed and transformed. Amen. We're called to be different, to be that epic explosion because of what the Lord Jesus and what God has done for us. His grace, as Rob said, that we rest on his unchanging grace, his peace being close to God. And we're blessed with every spiritual blessing. Jesus, our cornerstone. And as Rob said, prepaid, and he's prepaid everything for us to be right with him. And it's been planned since the beginning of time. Our hope, our future is built on nothing less than Jesus, our cornerstone, our guarantee, the guarantee that never runs out. Would you stand with me if you're able, please? And we're going to sing Cornerstone. Built on nothing less than 
Jesus' blood and righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Jesus' blood and righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest ring, but only trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, we made strong in the same As we stand together, we're going to declare our faith together. And these words are based on Ephesians 3. Together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in Jesus, God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Rob's going to bring us a few very quick notices. Very, quick. very, very quick notices. Um, first is to say, um, today we have, as you know, Dick and Caroline Seed with us. Uh, and this afternoon at 4.45, there is an afternoon tea, uh, which uh, plenty of people have signed up for. But we'd really love you to come if you'd like to meet them and talk to them informally at 4.45 this afternoon. Then this evening, uh, we have a Sunday conversation where uh, we do the interview with them. I spent two hours with them on Zoom this week and learned some fabulous things uh, about uh, what they have been through, uh, what they're currently doing, and what they hope to do. And I really want to encourage you to come to that. Um, please, please come. 6.30, it will be a, a great evening of conversation. Uh, so please come to that. 
Secondly, to say uh, it's the last opportunity to book in for the bereavement um, awareness course day, um, uh, which is being run by Care for the Family. And uh, you need to book in for that. Um, uh, it's happening on Zoom, so you can do it uh, from the comfort of your own uh, home. Um, or you can chum up with somebody else who's on it and do it together. But really, um, we're getting to the stage where we need to close the book on that. Uh, so please have a look at your bulletin. All these things are in the bulletin. And then uh, also in the bulletin, please look at the information about the prayer chain, uh, which is starting this week. Um, so if you have an urgent need or a, um, a very personal need that you need praying for, please do read up about that and make use of that generous offer in your times of greatest need. And then very last thing, there are some tomato plants at the back of church, uh, which you're welcome to take. Please can I have the pots back? Um, and um, that's that. Are you waving at me for something? Hey? And don't forget the APCM on the 16th of May, says the PCC secretary. Thank you. Okay, Nigel, thank you. I'm going to pray as we close our service and then we're going to sing one last song together. So may this day bring Sabbath rest to our hearts and to our homes. May God's image in us be restored. May our imaginations in God be restored as we've heard this morning. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May we know the grace to embrace our own infinite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. And may God's word feed us and his Holy Spirit lead us into the week and into the life to come. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Would you stand with me if you're able, please? And we're going to close our worship this morning in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the is drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving seems, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. This is the power of Christ.
as we close. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Scarlet sins had a crimson cost you nailed my debt to that old rugged cross An empty slate at the empty grave Thank God that stone was rolled Scarlet sins had a crimson cost You nailed my debt to that old rugged cross An empty slate at the empty grave Thank God that stone was rolled away. Scarlet sins had a crimson cost. You nailed my debt to that old rugged cross. An empty slate at the empty grave. Thank God that stone was rolled. Thank <laughs> you. 